So we concluded that to find delay in a CMOS gate, or in any gate actually, we need to find the capacitance loading the output node, as well as the resistance that charges or discharges this output node. Now, let's look at this um, network, which consists of two CMOS inverters. The second CMOS inverter, inverter 2, is simply the load on inverter 1. So we just need to find the delay of inverter 1. What we want to find is propagation delay through the first inverter. So we need to find TP high low at V output 1 and TP low high at V output 1. And so to do this, we have to find the loading capacitance CL at the node V output 1. If we look at node V output 1, it actually sees four transistor terminals. It sees two gate terminals from inverter 2 and it sees two drain terminals from inverter 1. And so what we have to do is we have to calculate C gate N2, which is the capacitance we see on this side, plus C gate P2, which is the capacitance we see here, plus C drain N1, which is the capacitance we see here, plus C drain N P1, which is the capacitance we see here. So four capacitances, two drain capacitances, and two gate capacitances. It is good to notice at this early juncture that the drain capacitances are capacitances that come from the current stage and that the gate capacitances are capacitances that come from the next stage. Now, if capacitor CL is to charge, its only path to the supply is through transistor MP1. Because if you look at transistor MP2, the node V output 1 sees the gate of transistor MP2. So there can be no current that comes from the gate of transistor MP2. We can only provide current through the channel of MP1. And so when we calculate resistance RP, it's going to be RP1. RP1 is the transistor that charges the node V output 1. Similarly, the only path to ground, the only way we can discharge node V output 1 is through RN1. And so R is either going to be RP1 or RN1. And so to find the output, to find the delay at any output node, we need to calculate two drain capacitances which come from the current stage and the resistance that also comes from the current stage. And we need to calculate two gate capacitances that come from the next stage. Once we do that, we can calculate TP high low is equal to 0.69 RN1 times CL and TP low high is equal to 0.69 RP1 times CL. And the reason is, if we see a high to low transition at the output node, then we are seeing a path being provided by the NMOS transistor to ground. And if we see TP low high at the output node, then we see a path to supply being provided by the PMOS transistor. And so the problem now is to find expressions for C gate, C drain, and R. Now, C gate is the easiest because it corresponds directly to the uh, MOS capacitance that we have dealt with um, extensively while looking at the, uh, at, the, at the MOSFET. And so looking at the, at the gate terminal of the transistor, we see a capacitance through the oxide. This capacitance, C gate, is going to be equal to C oxide times W times L. Now, C oxide is a, uh, partly a physical property and partly a process property because it's epsilon oxide by T oxide. So epsilon oxide is a material property. T oxide is a property of the, uh, of the process that we use. While W and L, the uh, size of the gate, are design parameters that are open to the designer. So C gate is equal to C oxide times W times L and C gate N2 is equal to C oxide times W N2 times L N2. C gate P2 is equal to C oxide times WP2 times LP2. Moving on to the drain capacitances CDN1 and CDP1, if we look at the drain of the transistor or the source, it really doesn't matter, but we are concerned with the drain because the drain is connected to the output node in this case. So looking at the drain, there exists a PN junction between the drain and the body, whether it is in NMOS or PMOS, and that PN junction is always reverse biased by virtue of the connection of the body to ground in the case of NMOS and to supply in the case of PMOS. Because this PN junction is reverse biased, there exists a wide and healthy depletion region around the drain. 
This depletion region has insulating properties and therefore we have a conducting plate in the drain itself and a conducting plate in the body and we have in between them an insulator which is the depletion region. So we have a capacitance here. The problem with this capacitance, this diffusion capacitance, is that it is non-linear. Its value changes with the value of voltage. But if we look at the drain, the drain is actually the output node, right? So the voltage on this drain is going to change as we charge up or discharge the output node. So the capacitance also is going to change. This non-linear capacitance is very annoying. And so to deal with it, we calculate an average value Cj. Cj is the average value of the capacitance as the node changes through its whole range. So we already take into consideration the properties of the depletion region and the non-linear properties that have to do with switching. But this capacitance is per unit area, so it's measured per unit area, so it's normalized to area, because the area of, of, the, uh, of the drain is a design parameter, so we have to leave this open to the designer. And so if we look at the area of the PN junction, the area is the area of the bottom plate of the drain. So if, we, if you imagine that you look at the transistor in uh, a top view, with this being the gate, this being the source, and this being the drain, so the area is the area of the drain, the entire area of the drain. This dimension is W, but this dimension is not L, it's actually L drain. We call it the length of the drain, because L, the channel length, is this dimension, it's the distance between the drain and the source. And so C drain is equal to Cj times W times L drain, not L. And so for Cdn1 is equal to Cj Wn1 L drain and Cdp1 and CDP1, yes, is equal to CJ, WP1, L drain. L drain, the length of the drain, is not necessarily constant between transistors, but it usually is. We will find out more when we look at layouts in module 8. So this is how we calculate drain capacitance. The only remaining uh, question we have is RN and RP, the resistance. So if you look at RP, or Rn, it really doesn't matter either. So the resistance we're looking at is the resistance of the channel. It is the resistance of the created N-type channel between the source and the drain. This extent of this piece of, of N-type semiconductor is gonna have a finite resistance and we want to find this value of resistance. But the problem with um, NMOS or PMOS resistance is that it is nonlinear. if you draw IDS versus VDS for any transistor, it's going to be a curve, not a straight line. And so the value of resistance, which is the slope at any point, is going to be variable. And it's going to depend on what value of VDS you are at. And so this is a nonlinear resistance, and it's really hard to calculate it as a single value. If we had a straight line passing through origin, that resist then resistance would just be the slope which would be constant for the entire range. And so to find a single value for resistance that we can use, we find like an R average, we find an average resistance, right? So R average is the average resistance through the entire range of switching of V out. So if, if we look at the NMOS, V output is VDS for the NMOS. And so V output for the NMOS is gonna change from VDD down to zero. Recall that we are only calculating that for the 50% point. That's the definition of propagation delay. And so we will only look at this, at the uh, switching ratio from VDD to VDD over two. And so the R average is gonna be calculated over the range from VDD to VDD over two. The instantaneous resistance of the N master transistor is equal to V output divided by the current of the transistor. And so R is gonna be V output by the current of the transistor, IDS. But this is instantaneous value. We have to find the average value. So we will uh, integrate this whole thing from uh, VDD up to VDD over 2, right? And we are going to integrate with respect to the voltage. To find the average value, we're gonna, um, uh, we are going to uh, divide this by uh, the same range over which we integrated, which is VDD over 2. Now. The current that we are looking at is the saturation current, right? So we're going to look at the saturation current, which is actually a constant with respect to the output because it is not a function of VDS. So this is going to be I sat 
dv out. And now we are going to integrate v output with respect to v output, and we're going to end up with uh, vdd square over 4 vdd i set, which is going to give us vdd over 4 i set. And therefore, the average resistance is vdd over 4 i set. If we want to find Rn, we're going to use the i set of the n mos. If we are, if you want to find uh, RP, then you use the I set of the PMOS. And therefore, we have calculated um, CGN, CGP, uh, and CDN, CDP, and the RN and RP. Now, knowing CGN2, which is C oxide times W times L2, and CGP2, which is C oxide times W times LP2, and CDN1, which is CJ times W times L drain 1, and CDP1, which is CJ times W times L drain uh, P1, and then we can calculate uh, uh, RP1 or RP2 uh, using a VDD over 4 I set for either transistors, and from that we can calculate the time constant uh, for each, which is a representation of uh, their delay, right? Now, look at, um, look at the expression for resistance. It's inversely proportional to current, right? It's inversely proportional to the current available in the transistor. And that makes sense, right? Like when, when we look at the uh, delay equation for the capacitor, it's I equal to C D V by DT, C L D V by DT. And so DT is equal to C L times dv over i. Cl is the loading capacitance at the output node, right? But dv by i is the change in voltage at the output node divided by the available current to do this discharging. If you look at this quantity, it is very similar to the resistance of the, of the, of the MOSFET that is doing the charging or discharging. So the, even the original uh, delay equation suggests that we should calculate the average resistance of the transistor and we should calculate the total loading capacitance at the output node, which we have already done.